What's up? Peace, legend. How you feeling? I'm good, man. What's going on? Chilling, man. Thank you uh, so much for joining us this afternoon. No problem. Um, before we uh, get started and everybody's logging on, can you tell me uh, how you've been uh, staying busy during this uh, COVID uh, situation we've been going through? Yeah, uh, I've been writing um, a musical that I've, I've been working on it for just about two years. Um, so I've spent a good amount of this time working on the songs for that musical. Um, I've been doing a lot of bike riding lately. Um, just trying to stay active and just be just being out in in the world as opposed to being cooped up in the house. Just right. out out in the, you know getting some getting some vitamin D out in the sun getting some vitamin D and um, it's been cool, man. It's been cool. Absolutely. Um, before we talk about the 25th anniversary of Sitting on Chrome, you also uh, celebrated the 30th anniversary of your debut album. Uh, can you tell me uh, some of your best memories of creating that album? Um, yeah, well, I made that album in a studio in New York City called the Firehouse Studios. And um, during that time that I was working on that album, um, I, would, I, would always see, I would always see RZA a lot. I, I knew RZA. Um, but RZA was also working out of that studio, and he was working on his, his new group. The Wu Tang Clan, who, um, you know, I I, rem I remember uh, him rushing into the studio to get, um, to get to get a demo um, because uh, he had a meeting with with uh, with Loud Loud Records, and he's like, "Yo, just run me, just run these passes down for me so I can take it over there." And he took he took that demo, and rushed back to meet with Loud, and obviously wound up getting getting a, getting a deal. Uh, one of my favorite cuts from that album is Me and the Biz. Um, our brother is, um, you know, leading prayers at the moment. Can you tell me what uh, inspired you to uh, create that song back in 1990? Oh, when you, I thought we were talking about the Sitting on Chrome album when I, when I gave that whole story about RZA. It had to do with the 94. But I thought oh, you asked me about 94. My, yeah. my fault. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it was uh, best memories of making um, your day. Take a look album. around. Ah, my fault. Okay. That's all good. Uh, but yeah, just uh, obviously thoughts and prayers out to out to Biz. Don't really know much about what's going on. Just hoping that um that he's taking care of himself. That he's listening to the doctors and following, you know, their strict orders. Um, a lot of times, us men, as we get older, you know, we think we can handle. I'm good. I'm good. We just keep saying I'm good. I, you know, I, I don't I don't need to drink that. I don't need to eat that. I'm good, and we're not good. We, we, we got to take care of ourselves, for real. Our bodies are, we only get one of these bodies, so we need to make sure we take care of it. Definitely. Um, going from your debut album, we went into uh, Slaughterhouse, and it, it correlates with the INC going into uh, uh, Sitting on Chrome. But can you take us back to how you formed the INC going into the Slaughterhouse album? Yeah, well, I uh, after my debut, I really, I felt like I wanted to, be presented more as a group because I just thought maybe it would like I there were so many dope groups out at that time from from Cypress Hill to you know Funk Dubious I mean it was a bunch of groups out at that time and it just there were really not a lot of solo artists it was, it was more about groups and so it just seemed like I had a better chance of you know selling records if I had a group concept and so you know my my thinking was if if a, if a fan doesn't like how I rap or like me for whatever reason, maybe they'll like one of the group members and be into the group because of that person and maybe not because of me. So that was my thinking going into it. It was really more of a marketing um, mindset, you know, when I created the group. But, um, you know, I, I had a lot of talented people that I was working with. Um, I, these guys I went to high school with, um, Ice and Unique. It, we all went to the same high school and, um, you know, Unique was a really dope producer who, had, who I would go to their house all the time. And we would just make demos and play around and stuff. So, and, and, and at that point, Nick had already produced a couple of joints on my debut. He didn't get, he didn't, he didn't get credit for his production work on my, on my debut album, but he produced, um, as I, as I reminisce and, um, you know, um, so he was already, for me, he was already a known commodity as a producer. And, and so, um, yeah, I said, yo, you know, yeah, I want y'all to be part of the part of this thing I'm doing, and so we created uh, 
the INC, and the, the original members were Ice, uh, and his brother Unique, you know, and myself. And then um, at a certain point when the, when the album dropped, they weren't able to go on tour. And so I kind of kind of make a shift and, 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 and find other, other players. Paul Perry was around during that time. They introduced me to her, actually. Um, and so um, she featured on a song or whatever. But once they couldn't go on tour with me, you know, I had the, the, the next two up were Paula Perry and Lord Digger. Gotcha. Um, after that Slaughterhouse album did its thing, um, what, were your, what was your mind state uh, going into your uh, third album, Sitting on Chrome? Uh, after that album, what was uh, Master Ace's plan in creating uh, Sitting on Chrome? So when Slaughterhouse, when Slaughterhouse dropped, pretty much at the same time, Dr. Dre's The Chronic had blown up. And it really changed the landscape of music. Um, all of a sudden, we, he, you know, Dre's, Dre's releasing this crystal clear, perfectly EQ'd and mixed music where we were just doing like real dirty, dusty, grimy, you know, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, man, like, when you play this, when you couldn't even play a song off Slaughterhouse after a Dr. Dre record or vice versa. Like, it was just like night and day to sound. Right. And, and so I said, well, my next project got to got sound clean and loud and crisp. And I need to try to figure out a way to do that. So that was one part of my, my thought process. Um, but then the other part of it was a remix that I did for Jeep Ass Nigga uh, that, I re that, that I retitled Born to Roll. Um, um, just unexpectedly blows up um, on the West Coast and the South and the Midwest. Started getting all this radio play. Video was number one on the box. Um, and all of a sudden, I have this, we have this, this, this song, this monster of a song that's just taking this, a life of its own that I didn't plan. I didn't think all of that was going to happen. But now it became, okay, the, the label, Delicious Vinyl was my label at the time. And, you know, their, their message to me was, you know, this Born the Road thing, you've really woken up the car culture people and they really are feeling you right now. You know, with this next record, you really need to do a car culture record to kind of like appease those fans because we, we, we think we can really like sell some records here. And, you know, intellectually it made sense to me. Um, I probably creatively wouldn't have gone that route um, if not for the influence of the, the record label telling me that that's what they kind of wanted me to do. Um, and they had had some success with, you know, Tone Loke, Young MC, those guys was all platinum. And so, you know, Farsight was gold, I think, or little, went gold late, late. So I was like, okay, well, maybe they know what they're talking about. Let me, let me try to give them the record um, that they want. So I created this, this, you know, the title sitting on Chrome. Um, I mean, I was into cars. I was already, that was my thing. I was into Jeeps and cars and sound systems and rims and all that. So it wasn't too far from who I was, um, but to make an entire album, you know, kind of around that idea was not something that I came up with on my own. It was really um, the influence of the, the, the label. Uh, can you take us back, before we get into individual songs, can you take us back to what those uh, studio sessions were like? Um, so for like Firehouse Studios, we were there. Um, I remember being there. A lot of times we would get there. Like my sessions would start at like 9 p.m., somewhere 8, 9 p.m., and we were there. Many nights we were there until the sun came up the next morning. Um, and while mix downs were happening, or while we were, the engineer was doing his thing, we would be in the lounge playing uh, Tekken 2. I remember that very, very vividly. Tekken 2 was the game that we were always playing on, um, on, um, on PlayStation. Uh, so dudes would just take turns playing Tekken, sometimes playing Madden or playing NBA Live, but there was a lot of Tekken going on. Um, and just, you know, ordering food um, and just back and forth uh, to the studio during that time. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a whirlwind. Um, a lot of different people coming through the studio, friends and, you know, stuff like that. Premier come through, you know, Guru might stop through. Different people would stop through because that, that studio was a very uh, active studio. A lot of people worked out of there. Uh, shout out to my man Blase Martel uh, uh, from the group Blase Blase who, who's on the chat. And he, he mentioned that he, he used to work at Firehouse as well. Right. Uh, let's get into some of this album. Um, I'm going to play a few snippets. I think Instagram likes to kick people off if they play too much. 
So yeah. if we get kicked off, please rejoin me. But uh, let's get into that intro real quick. Can you can you hear? Yeah. So I'm gonna stop it there, and you take me back to uh, the creation of the intro. Well, that that those drums are some hard drums right there. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember who produced it. I don't know if you got the production credits in front of you. Yeah. Um, but um, it was a dope ass joint. I love the drums, but it didn't have the tempo that made me want to rhyme. But I was like, this is still so sinister and dope. I love that sax, like that muted trumpet. I was like, we got to do something with this. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it my, my, the intro. And um, up to that point, each album before that, I had done a poem um, as a way to kind of set the album off. Um, take a look around and then um, walk through the valley, which is the intro on um, Slaughterhouse. So I said, I'm, I'm going to continue that, continue that tradition. And so I basically do a poem over those drums that sets the tone for what the album is about, which is my, my cousin, who lives, who's from LA, is coming out to New York to spend the summer with me. And um, that was my, that was my way of letting the audience know that this was gonna be a meshing of cultures and sounds in terms of hip hop music. So it was me introducing kind of a, a West Coast feel or vibe into East Coast, into an East Coast, you know, uh, thought process in terms of drums and beats and boom bap and all of that. So it was me trying to like kind of mesh the two together. Looks like the Blues Brothers produced that. Okay, yeah. Shout uh, to let's my man, go with, to the INC ride. R.I.P. Take uh, me back to the INC ride. So a lot of people don't know this, but that was not the original. Um, that was a remix for INC ride. There's a version produced by Louis Fat Cat. Um, which is like a super jazzy, almost a Dilla-esque uh, version of INC Ride. That was the original version. Um, I did the same rhymes. The hook was a little different, but it was basically the same thing. And so um, when we presented that, that Louis Fat Cat version of INC Ride to Delicious Vinyl, they were like, because I, I said, I want this to be the first single. And I think they felt that it wasn't, going to be commercial enough or radio friendly enough um so they were kind of like you know maybe you should do another one of your famous remixes like you did on born to roll and i was like all right so i went in the studio and i came up with the isley brothers sample and i used the the drums the same drums from uh nothing but a g thing right and, and um and i created the inc ride remix as soon as delicious vinyl heard it they're like Oh, this ain't the remix. This we're going with this one. This is this is the first single, <laughs> and they went and rushed out like we. This is off, this is the single, and all of a sudden, Louis Fat Cat's original version turns into the remix. So, can you remember what the reaction was like when that hit the streets? I don't know what it was like in New York, but I know in L.A. it uh it was at that point in my career, even with Born to Roll, that was the most airplay that I ever got. Uh, from any record that I ever put out. Um, I remember being in L.A., and we were listening to Power 106, and they were playing INC Ride, and they had been playing it all day, and I was just like, oh, man, change the station. Change over to the beat. Change over to the beat, and INC Ride was on. I was like, yo. And it wasn't like I didn't like my song, but I was like, all right, like, I get it. Like, but that's how, it, when you're in heavy rotation, that's what it's like. It's like you can't, you can't escape your song. It's like on every channel, every station, nonstop, all day. Right. Let's go into Eastbound. Mm. From the east. From the east. From the east. From the east. Yeah, Take I me like back. That, that was one of my early beats that I that I that I did. You know, um, I did a lot of production on this record that people aren't really aware, but I did a lot of production on this album, and that was one of those kind of like grimier joints. And if you really listen to it, the only elements about that song that feel West Coast or outside of New York is kind of like the elements in the background. There's like some musical elements, some strings and stuff like that. But the, the drums, 
hard hard drums, New York hard drums. Um, you're talking about, you know, uh, the sample from the East. You know, all, all of that. Even the loop, the fil the filtered loop. You know, which when I made the beat, I was like, I, does this is this gonna fit? And then I just kind of threw it in there and threw the drums on. And I was like, oh, this, I like this little swing. And so, yeah, it's just one of them joints, just like to 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 set the album off and let people know where we from, even though. You know, at that point, Born and Roll was a big record, and people were saying, oh, Ace is on some West Coast stuff. He's on some West Coast stuff. And so it was just a reminder. Where are we from? From the East. Boom. Right. So. Hello. 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 So that's just setting the tone for the story line. Um, that's actually my my my, my wife uh, is the is the girl's voice on there. Uh, <laughs> my my wife she wasn't my wife then, but she's my wife now. And she, um, you know, I kind of coached on what I wanted her to what, what the vibe was. You know, act like you just woke up and you know, try and figure out what's going on for tonight and keep that just keep it natural. And she kept a real Brooklyn, real Brooklyn accent, real natural. And it helps tell the, the the story, you know, about to go meet up with some friends and hang out in New York. Very dope, very dope. Eastbound, or uh, what's, what's going, going on? on? So, a couple things about that. Another one of my another one of my beats that I, uh, productions by me. It's easy to tell. Um, my production because there's almost always a vocal sample, so you hear um, incorporated. You know, like I was, and 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 then I, N, C. Those those letters I got from, I had a a, a Sesame Street album, um, oh. and so I I I took those letters. I used them a lot throughout. You know that Sesame Street. I, I lost it at some point, man. I I think I left it at a studio in like '01 or something, but. I use that I use that album a lot over the course of my career, different little pieces of that of that album. But the, there's just always like some cool little bits. But you'll always hear some kind of vocal samples in my production from back then. I always like that. I always was into that, you know. So, um, yeah, just um, what's going on? You're rolling with the INC. Uh, it's a part. It's kind of trying to be a party record. Hands in the air. You know, it's kind of you know trying to hearken to the you know, nothing but a G thing kind of vibe a little bit. Um, and there's my version of, uh, you know, a party record for, 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 for my perspective. Right. Let's jump into the B side. Hmm. So I, I re I, once again I I used the uh, I did a one bar loop of the nothing but a G thing drums again can't go wrong with those drums um, and a real you know filtered bass line um, now that record was actually being pushed to be a single uh, at that point where like, it was like late late in the album so we were already like two we were already like two singles in and then they wanted to put this on the B side of the third single and the DJs kind of responded to it and it actually started getting played in New York and which was like a new thing for me because New York was really not messing with me, but they okay. started playing that. They started playing that record on the mix shows, uh, flex and all of them started playing it. And I was like, okay, maybe we got something here, and man. I would say not even three weeks after the record started getting played, Jermaine Dupree and the brat drop a song called the B side. Right. And as soon as they dropped their song, radio immediately moved off of mine and started playing theirs because they were they were platinum, they were huge, they were already you know a uh, known commodity. And so the little bit of momentum that we almost had with that record got just squashed when Brat and Jermaine Dupree dropped dropped their version of B side. And they 